Okay. Okay. Now it's recording. Can we start? Go for it. Yeah. Just let me check my script. Well, were you a Discharge fan before joining the band? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose if I, I didn't like what they were doing, I probably wouldn't have joined the band. So, yeah. Yeah. And how you ended up uh, being the singer of the band? You were at uh, Broken Bones before, yeah? Yeah, I sang in Broken Bones for a few years, and uh, it was just, I suppose it was just natural uh, progression, really. I was supposed to be in Discharge before I joined Broken Bones, really, but the Broken Bones thing come up, and yeah, that's how it happened. And are you a punk rocker, of course, and... What made punk music and hardcore caught your attention? Um, am I a punk rocker? Is that your question? No, no. What made punk rock caught your attention? What do you like um, in punk rock music or even in, in, in the movie? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, it was just the whole, you know, the aggression of it, the rebellion side of it. You know, I was always a bit, when I was younger, I just felt like I couldn't fit in with, you know, the, the normal crowd, so to speak. You know, I was a rebellious kid and punk rock spoke my language. Yeah. How old are you now? 46. 46, yeah. Is that a rudimentary penny t-shirt that you are wearing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. You and spotted that. Oh, what? <laughs> Sorry? Did you spotted that good? You got good eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you remember uh, when you uh, became aware of this charge in the first place? When you heard then uh, in the first place or uh, the yeah, read it, about it was then? funnily enough. It was because my first band that I played it when I was about thirteen years old. I played I played drums originally, yeah. and I was drummer in a band called chaotic discharge and yeah but at the time i i didn't know about discharge i was still getting into punk i was still you know discovering all the bands and uh so i played drums in a band called chaotic discharge and everybody thought we were were discharge fans because of the name they thought they assumed we were like a db sort of band and we weren't so you know, everyone kept mess. you know, discharge, discharge. I'm like, who is this discharge? I, you know, I got to find out. And uh, yeah, the first the first discharge album I heard was live at City Gardens. Wow. And it wasn't a very good album. <laughs> oh, I, like I didn't that. like, no, I didn't, I didn't like it when I first heard it. I was like, uh, you know, I'll give this band a miss. And then uh, <laughs> I ended up, you know, people used to make the little mixtapes back then. And uh, I had a mixtape and, and the first song was Decontrol. So, you know, that that was a lot better than what's on live at City Gardens. <laughs> um, yeah, so from there, yeah, I, you know, I like Discharge from that point in. And did you see them live at the 80s or the beginning of the 90s? No, um, I've always kind of missed them. Because, I mean, well, they they were broken up for quite a long yeah. time in the in the 90s and i don't think they got back together until 2000 and early 2000s when they did that comeback album and then uh that's when rat ended up joining the band and uh i was i was living in new jersey at the time i remember them coming over to play at cbgb's but um i was going through other things at the time so yeah i missed it and how did uh how this transition to from drums to the microphone happened? Um, well, I mean, you know, when I was younger, I used to get into a lot of trouble. And uh, I ended up going away for a bit. I, you know, I spent I spent a couple of years in, in prison, you know, with because of drugs and stuff. And uh, when I got out of prison, I, I started, you know, I started a band because I, I, had, I had stepped away from the music side of things for you know, quite a few years and I got back into it and, uh, you know, a friend of mine started a band and asked if I would do it. So I, I never sang at that point. 
So yeah, jumping on the mic and just went for it. Yeah. And can you make a living as a musician nowadays or do you have a normal job? Yeah, I work I work a part-time job. I mean, you know, I guess you could make a living out of it if you were playing every night, you know what I mean? But it's realistically, it's not realistic. Um, you know, music, especially with, you know, just the way things are now with royalties and everything, it's it doesn't pay a lot of money, you know. Yeah. Especially now, most people listen to music, you know, online through like Spotify, YouTube and all that shit. And it's like, there's no money in that. You know, you, you can have tens of thousands of streams and it's like per stream you're getting, you know, cents. 0 0.001 cents yeah. per stream. So even with tens of thousands of streams, you know, it's, you, you couldn't, you couldn't make a living on it. You know, unless you're fucking Iron Maiden or some shit, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? But for a band, you know, a band like Discharge, you know, it's like I said, unless, unless we were playing every single fucking night of the week, then then maybe. But now, you know, I do a part-time job working yeah. in care, work af uh, look after, you know, kids with, uh, you know, behavior, behavioral problems and learning difficulties and, you know, uh, ADHD type of thing. Yeah. So. And talking about punking again, uh, why do you think it was to be a punk in the past and what it is nowadays? Um, you know, when I when I got into it, it meant something. You know what I mean? That that was like it it, it embodied me. You know that that was who I am. You know, and it was like you. You were part of something and you you were in a fight to so say it was real, you know what I mean? It's like this is it's not just the fucking music you listen to, you know what I mean? It was it was something I lived and breathed that just completely defined me as a person. My whole, you know, my, my whole thought process, my whole thinking, everything. That that was who I am. Um you know, and it, you know, at the time it was it was new. It was refreshing, you know, and, um, you know, I don't know what the difference is between then and now, because I still feel the same way as I did back then, you know, maybe it's different for the younger kids getting into it now. I don't know. Probably. You know, but, you know, it, back then we, it, it was a fight, you know what I mean? We, we were fighting with, you know, just everybody's society, police, teachers, even parents and, Just the, the, the entire social structure, you know, it was, it was rebellion. At least it was for me anyway. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I hate these conversations when people want to say, what, what is punk rock? What isn't punk rock? But for me, that's what it was. Yeah, I understand that. And again, about money. I did read recently that members of Diamond Head bought a Corvette with the first royals from the cover Metallica did of them. How was it with Discharge being covered by a big band like Metallica helped the band in any way, financially, or even to be exposed to a wider audience? audience? Um, I mean, I think there was a payment involved, but it wasn't like a lot. You know, I think it was, I think some of the guys were screwed over in that whole deal from what I understand. Um, but I think it probably you know, exposed discharge maybe to, to some new fans. I don't know. You know, I'm sure there's people out there that heard our songs, you know, that Metallica did and said, oh, maybe I should, you know, check this band out. But who can say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So now you recorded one album with Discharge that's called End yeah. of Days. I was listening yeah. to it. And that's a great album. And Do you like the, the, the end result of this record? Did I like the end result? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah. There's always things that you listen to and you're like, oh, I should have done this. Or, I should have, we should have fixed this bit, you know, but it is what well, overall I'm happy with it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it's, I think it speaks for the, for the times, especially, you know, this all the weird shit that's been going on like the last you know however many years especially since 2016 you know 
Yeah. It's a sign of the times, really. Yeah. Are you a no future guy? Your mindset is a little bit no future, or are you a positive in, in any way? Um, I always was no future, you know. I was always that kind of pessimist sort of person. But, you know, get, getting older a bit now, I'm trying to be more positive. And, you know, I... I try to look for for the good in things now, and you know I think negativity breeds negativity. Yeah. Um, so you know I'm I am all about the positivity now. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's difficult, really. It, well, it is difficult, you know, especially you know all the shit that's going on. It's just I mean you know I, I try not to even watch the news anymore because it just makes me so angry. It makes you angry, and uh, yeah, and it's just it's you know overall. I just don't think it's good for the overall well being. To be honest, it's like you can drive yourself fucking nuts following politics, watching the news, or you know what I mean. I mean, I, in one sense, I do feel that it's important to keep up with some of that stuff, and and be informed and know what's going on. At that. But it, on the other hand, sometimes. It, Like you said, it, it it winds you up and it, it does make you angry. It really does make you angry. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay away from the whole negative mindset, so to speak. In your opinion, the bands, hardcore bands, members of hardcore bands have, have, has to be uh, angry people or not necessarily? Well, yeah, I mean, I was one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's uh, that's how I always was, you know. Um, but like I said, it's just you know, I'm at the point now. I feel like life's too short to be pissed off all the time, you know. Yeah. You got to take the good with the bad as well. That show in São Paulo will be your first time in Brazil. Uh, with me, yeah. I think the I think the band was there probably about. Yeah, yeah, but your first time. It'll be my first time, yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you know about Brazil? Um, hmm, Brazil. I don't know a whole lot about it, to be honest. You know, I know there's a statue on top of the hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I know that, you know, I know, I know we have a massive fan base out that way. Um, and, and I think, to be fair, Discharges fan base, you know, a majority of it is in Brazil. And I know there's a huge punk and hardcore and metal scene out that yeah. way. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to coming out there and, and playing. Should be good. Do you know any band from Brazil? Uh, mainly Ratos de Pereiros. Yeah. That, yeah, there you go. You wear the shirt. Yeah. One of my favorite bands. And, do, and Sepultura, do, of course. Yeah. We have a, a prolific punk scene from the 80s to now. Not many, not so vast as in the past, but Brazil had great punk bands, punk hardcore bands, and even metal bands. Yeah. Well, do, do you have a project with Stig from Amibix? Yeah, that's right. Um... Yeah, it's something we started over the pandemic, really, because, you know, we couldn't do anything. You know, we're locked in our houses. And, uh, yeah, it's just something we started doing over the pandemic. Uh, it's a band called False Fed. False so that's Fed. the name of the band. Yeah, it's with um, Stig out of Amoebix and uh, Roy Mayorga, who was, yeah. he's been in a lot of bands. He's in ministry at the moment. Oh, yeah, so fly. Originally, he was from Nausea. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and a local friend of mine playing the bass, uh, a guy named JP. And so, yeah, it, it was a weird process. You know, we started this uh, project, so to speak. Everything had to be done from home, obviously, um, with the lockdown and, you know, and the pandemic. Um, it, it was a new experience for all of us having to record that way, you know, in, in different parts of the world, because Roy lives in... LA, you know, Stig's, I mean, Stig lives in England, but he's down in Bristol, which is about three hours away. And, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, the album's done. 
It's mastered and we're working on the artwork at the moment and should be released hopefully, I'm going to say beginning of 2023, hopefully. You never met each other on a studio room? Um, I mean, I've met everybody in person, but we've never actually been in the same room together yeah. to yeah. make the music. So it's all been done in different parts. You know, Roy's done his stuff out in, in L.A. Uh, Stig did his stuff right in his house. Um, and Igor, actually, from Sepultura. Yeah. Because um, he was in London. He recorded my vocals on this album. Cool. Yeah, him, him and uh, his wife, uh, Lima. Lima, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they had a, a big part in it as well. Uh, talking about Amoebics, are you aware about the thing with Rob Miller and his band Across, the revisionist thing? Oh, uh, with the with the liner notes or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, all I know is you know he thanks somebody that he shouldn't have, and it's not gone down well for them. But I mean, I I don't know Rob personally. I mean, I can't really comment on it. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? Were you so, a Mavic fan? Are you a Mavic fan? Do you like Amibix? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. It was a little bit disappointed, but yeah. That's life. <laughs> yeah, shit happens, Lawrence. Yeah. Well, JJ, thank you for your attention. That's it.